Before we talk about solving quadratic equations, we're going to do a review of factoring. So you should have some familiarity with factoring, and in the first example, I can take out the greatest common factor of x, and I'm left with these two factors, x times x minus 8. But in the next example, I have to do this game where we look at the constant term, and I want numbers that multiply to negative 4. So here are some possib possibilities. But they not only have to multiply to negative 4, they also have to add to negative 3. So when I check, this one adds to 0, this one adds to negative 3. So that's the one I'm looking for. So here are my pairs, and I can write them as the factors x plus 1, that's this one, and x minus 4, that's the other one here. So as you play around with factoring and you get more experience, the numbers start to come a little quicker to you. For example, of 45, 9 and 5 come to mind. So if I'm looking at 9 and 5, that does multiply to negative 45, but it won't add up to negative 14. So what I'm going to do instead is use negative 9 and negative 5, because that adds up to negative 14 and multiplies to positive 45. So I would have x minus 9 and x minus 5 for the factors. In the last example, if I'm looking at negative 72, then 9 and 8 come to mind when I'm thinking of 72. And to get a negative 1, I'm going to need negative 9 and then positive 8 in order to get negative 1 as their sum. So the factors here would be x minus 9 and x plus 8. Now these next examples aren't any different from what we've just discussed. For example, x squared minus 25, we can still factor the way we did. However, it tends to get some confusion here because there is no middle term. That just means that it's a zero. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 25 and add to zero. So 5 and negative 5 come to mind when I think of negative 25. And of course when I add those together, I do get zero. So I could factor this using 5 and negative 5. However, this is a pattern that's uh, reasonably common. And we call this the difference of squares. So we're going to think about this as x squared minus 5 squared the difference of two perfect squares. So that way I'd be able to see that 5 is the number that I had, and the factors would be x plus 5, x minus 5. So if you recognize the difference of squares pattern here, this would be x squared minus 1 squared. So I could rewrite this as x plus 1, x minus 1. And then finally this last one is a little trickier. It's not quite an, a perfect square like we'd seen before. You're going to have to think of just a little harder to figure out what the squares were. But in this case, it's going to be 3x squared minus 7 squared. So I'll have 3x minus 7 and 3x plus 7. So again, it's not as though it's a, a big concern that you know that shortcut, but it certainly makes factoring go quicker if you recognize it. Now, if there's a number in front, like 2x, we'll talk about some strategies here, because so far we haven't done that. The first thing we should look for is a greatest common factor. So here, I'm going to have x squared plus 9x plus 20. And now I'm just going to focus on this inside expression and factor that. And so this gives me the factored form of the original expression, and the trick was getting that greatest common factor out of the way to start. In this one, again, I can take a 4 out, so I'll have x squared minus 5x minus 50. And if I just focus on this inside piece, that would be two numbers that multiply to negative 50 and add to negative 5. 5 and 10 come to mind. In order to make it add up to negative 5, I'm going to use negative 10 and positive 5. Now we do run into some cases where there is no greatest common factor and there's still a number in front. So what are we going to do? There's a few techniques. I'll go over each one of them with you. The first is um, that we take a look at this middle term here and we think about how could we work backwards to reassemble this. To work backwards we're going to have to take a look at this first and last term here. So 7 and 10, 
those are going to be involved in this sum and what's what we're going to be looking for is actually negative 70. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 70. That's 7 times the negative 10. And then from that multiplication, which pair adds up to negative 3? So for example, um, we could have 7 and negative 10. And if I add them together, uh, yep, I end up with negative 3. So this is the pair that I'm going to be using when I reconstruct it. And the way I'm going to rewrite this is 7x squared plus 7x minus 10x minus 10. And it might look different from where we started, but they are in fact the same thing. Because this middle part that I changed, it still would turn out to be negative 3 if I simplified it. Now the reason I did that is I'm going to then group them together by greatest common factor. So this first pairing here was put together on purpose because I can factor out a 7x from them. And there's an x plus 1 left over. And the second pair was put together because I can take out a negative 10. There would be an x plus 1 left over once I factor it out. Now looking at this, there's each one has another factor I can see, and that's x plus 1. So if I factor an x plus 1 out of it, then that means it's no longer a part of each piece, and what's left over is the 7x minus 10. So this method is usually re referred to as factoring by grouping, and um, this is, in fact, the factored form of our original expression. The next technique that I see uh, people using is call usually called the crisscross method. What we're going to do is we're going to take this first coefficient and we're going to make um, its factors here, so 2 and 1, um, 2 times 1 equal 2. And we have to figure out a pairing so that when I multiply along those crosses and add them together, that I get 11 out of it. So it's a bit of a guess and check again, just like where we started. And the way I'm going to get that, for example, numbers that multiply to negative uh, 21. For example, I could use this and say, let's try um, 7 and negative 3. So when I multiply along the crisscross, I get 7 and I get negative 6. So when I add those together, I get 1. That's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is the 11. So I know that's not the right pair. So if you use a little bit more than just guessing and, th and sort of strategize about how you're going to pick the partners, in this example, you'll see that it makes sense if I use 7 here and negative 3 there. This will give me positive 14 and negative 3, which when added together does give me the 11 that I was looking for. So this is the crisscross that I'm going to use, the one that's now in my uh, rough work here. That tells me that one of the factors is 2x minus 3, and the other factor is x plus 7. So I just went straight across to get the pairs, and straight across here. So if I was to write it out then, 2x minus 3, and x plus 7. And that is the factored form of our original expression. The last method I'm going to show you is a bit of a shortcut, but with shortcuts comes the danger of making careless mistakes. It's the one that I prefer to do, and I've had a lot of practice with it, so I'm pretty good at not making that careless mistake. However, I still do make that mistake, and uh, it's because I rushed through it, and that's usually what we do on a shortcut. So just like the other ones, we're going to start by multiplying that first and last term together. Only this time, we're going to drop the original expression, and we're going to write it like this. So 2 times 5, first times the last, is a 10. I'm going to start thinking about factoring this one, and then we'll get it back from how this relates to the original problem. So if I was to factor that, that would be x plus 1 and x plus 10. Now remember, this is not the factored form, because it is not equal to the one we started with. But one way we can start to get back there is we have to divide by 2 because we did this multiplication. And now what's going to happen is some of these fractions are going to reduce. So for example, this is x plus 1 half. It does not reduce, but this reduces to x plus 5. So now with what I have here, this denominator that I can see, um, x plus 1 half, is going to show me what the front coefficient is going to be, that 2 it'll come up here. 
So anything that's left over on the bottom that can't be reduced, you can move that to the front. And this is the factored form of the original expression. This is, in fact, equal to where we started. Now, the thing you have to be careful about is people forget this step here where they have to divide by the number you multiply at the beginning. So dividing by 2 because we multiplied by 2 up here. That's the one that really gets people. So be careful if you're using that shortcut. So once you have a technique that you like using for factoring, we're ready to start solving quadratic equations then. For example, if I look at this, we're going to start just by factoring. It would be x plus 6 times x plus 1 equals 0. And in order to make this equal to 0, all I have to do is make one of these pieces equal 0. If this piece equals 0, it doesn't matter what's here. 0 times anything equals 0. So I can safely ignore whatever's in there if I make that one piece equal to 0. And that's why factoring is convenient, is now that I have this factor, if I make x plus 6 equal 0, then I know that the whole thing will be equal to 0. So x would be equal to negative 6. That's one solution. Or another way we could do it is we could take this piece and make it equal to 0. So x would equal negative 1. So those are my two solutions, x equals negative 6 and negative 1. Okay, and then in this next example, um, all we're having to do here is rearrange it in order to help us to factor it. We're always going to want to solve for it equal to zero because we're using this zero product property, this thing where zero times anything else equals zero. So you're never going to try factoring without having moved everyone to one side and being left with this equals zero here. So now that I am in that form, the standard form, I'm going to have x minus 4 and x plus 3. So to make this equal to 0, that means x is equal to 4. And to make this equal to 0, that means x is equal to negative 3. And in this final example, again, it's not very different from the last one we just did. We'll have to rearrange first. And hopefully now that we've been jogging your memory about factoring, you'll recognize here there's a greatest common factor. And so now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3. So I should be able to do that with x minus 5 and x plus 2. So this would give me solutions x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 5, x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals negative 2. Those are the two solutions to that quadratic equation. And of course, we have a bunch of techniques that we just talked about. I'm going to use the uh, shortcut that I like, where I multiply the first and the last term. So this is the one that I'd be factoring. And I just have to think about what will get me there. And 7 times 4 is what I'm thinking in my head, because 7 times 4 is 28, and they have a difference of 3. But in order to make it a negative, it's going to be x minus 7 and x plus 4. So be careful, we're not done. This is one reason that sometimes teachers don't show you this shortcut, is people forget now that they're here. They have to transform it back. This is a different equation. It's not equal to what we started. So to transform it back, we divide by the 7 that we multiplied in. Now some things will reduce, and we will end up with these two factors. And I cannot reduce that fraction, so I know that I'd have x minus 1 and 7x plus 4 equals to 0. So that's going to give me two possible solutions here. One when x minus 1 is a 0. So x equals to 1, and another one when 7x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 4 out of 7. So here are my two possible solutions in that example. Okay, so finally, this is about as bad as it can get if you were to do a uh, quadratic equation by factoring. I'm going to rearrange it so that everybody's equal to 0. That has to be the case in order for this technique to work. So I'm going to have 3x squared plus 7x plus 4 
equals to zero. And my technique was to multiply them, so I'd have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. So this will be x plus 4 times x plus 3. And now I have to divide that 3 that I multiplied in. Some things reduce, some things don't. And that's going to leave me with 3x plus 4 times x plus 1 equal to 0. When 3x plus 4 equals 0, that means 3x is equal to negative 4, so x is negative 4 thirds. And when x plus 1 equals 0, x is equal to negative 1. So these are the two solutions that we would seek.